Years ago, when LeBron Raymond James Sr. was a 20-year-old baby, just two years removed from starring at St. Vincent St. Mary's High School in Akron, Ohio, and the playoffs still weren't quite the expectation in Cleveland yet. And that, that was the last time the King missed the playoffs, 2005. Fast forward 14 years to today, when the three-time NBA champion, four-time MVP, and the heir apparent and the illustrious Lakers franchise is this close to not making the postseason since, for the first time since 2005. Here's Lakers reporter Dave McMenamin. Fresh off an all-star victory in Charlotte, LeBron James said the only thing that is going to happen in his mental space going forward would be trying to get the Lakers back on track. Two weeks later, that mental space has turned into a headache. Scorched by the Suns, hibernating against the Grizzlies, and looking depleted against an Anthony Davis-less Pelicans team, the Lakers are as lost as ever. We need to be better. We need to be a lot better. We have um, uh, some things that we can always get better at. I think we're a young team and we all knew that coming into the season and we're putting together a team you know, to be together for the first year and trying to figure things out on the fly. Figuring out who to blame for LA's two and four record since the break is just as perplexing. LeBron? Easy target, but he's averaging 26, 11, and 9 in his last 10 games. The young guys? Brandon Ingram's been playing the best ball of his career, and Kyle Kuzma remains a consistent scorer. The coaching staff? Well, it's hard to build a defensive winner with Lonzo Ball out and Tyson Chandler hurt. Our starting point guard, Zoe, is one of the best point guard defenders in our league. You know, Tyson has been limited as well. Lakers owner Jeannie Buss chose a convenient scapegoat, the media. I'd rather see more responsibility um, it, it, with the media and, and maybe just taking it back a little bit to think about who it's affecting when they do write lies and conjecture and made up stuff just to get clicks and to get followers. It's, it's really not right. Fair or not, fingers are already being pointed and the Lakers look like a lock to miss the playoffs for the sixth straight year. The question is, will they quit now with 19 games left or find some fight? When you're not uh, winning ball games, you can always say, well, there's a problem. I, I don't believe in that. I believe there's things that we can do much better and be more consistent. We still uh, you know, have an opportunity to be great today, and we should take advantage of that or at least try to. And Dave joins us now live from Staples Center ahead of the game tonight against the Clippers. Uh, Dave, I'm not sure if you heard what Stephen A. Smith said earlier in the show, but he said if the Lakers don't win tonight against the Clippers, they're not going to make the playoffs. What is the team saying is the most important thing for them to do tonight to get that win? Yeah, Sage, that's probably a fair assessment from Stephen A. LeBron this morning at shoot when I spoke to him about what they need to do. He said we need to limit our mistakes. Now, that should probably include himself. You think back to that Phoenix game. LeBron James throws the ball off the backboard for a turnover. Inexcusable. He misses two late free throws when it was a two-possession game. Inexcusable. So limiting mistakes it counts for him as well. Luke Walton said we need to be cognizant of the Clippers bench. They bring Lou Williams in. They bring Montrell Harrell in. Those guys change the pace of the game. We need to be ready to match that energy and keep up our defensive focus when we have our second string in as well. So what about the roster? Any help on the horizon for this team? Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski reported this morning that there's been a pause on any talks between the Lakers and Carmelo Anthony's camp about bringing him in. Now, if somehow they put together a run here and it looks like they will make the postseason, Carmelo would be the type of player they'd be interested in bringing in. But we're not going to talk about Melo right now. You can just talk about what they have. And what they have is Lance Stevenson, who is out tonight with a sprained toe, and he had a big game last time the Lakers played the Clippers. Uh, Tyson Chandler is questionable with a stiff neck. That hurts their rim protection. And again, they're still waiting on Lonzo Ball. Uh, we're going to get an update later this week as to where his rehab stands. But, I mean, that's a guy who could help them a lot, and it doesn't appear that he's anywhere soon in terms of coming back to this team on the court. Dave, you made this point at the end of your piece. I want to reiterate it. Before 2013, this team had missed the playoffs just five times in their history. And they're now this close to missing it for the sixth straight season. David Miniman, live from Staples Center tonight ahead of the Lakers and the Clippers. Thank you, Dave. And overall, yeah, it's been a free fall for the Lakers, whose playoff chances were above 80% right after Christmas when LeBron went down with that groin injury on Christmas Day against the Warriors. It was just below 40% when Lonzo went down, which was about six weeks ago. Only 12% when LeBron returned from his groin injury. And today, a season low, 1% chance to make the postseason.
Coming up, top of the hour, here's Sage Ty Jerome and Virginia taking on Syracuse. Cavaliers, six-game winning streak coming in. Syracuse trying to beat an AP top two team for the second time this season. They won at uh, number one Duke, remember, back on January 14th. Virginia, heavy favorite to win at least a share of the ACC regular season title. They've had have games left against Syracuse, Louisville, while North Carolina and Duke face off on Saturday. The Blue Devils a long shot at claiming their first ACC regular season title since the 2009-2010 season. Game day, Seth Greenberg and Jay Williams. Just the playoffs. Yeah. Zion Williamson was four. And that Ouch. was 14 years long, ago. Long, long time ago. You know, it's one thing to lose important games down the stretch late in the season. It's another thing to do it the way LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers have been doing it. Let's just say it was not a good weekend for the purple and gold. Their downward spiral continued Friday night against the Bucks, who still have the best record in the league. But L.A. was outscored 15-2 in the final three minutes, and the game ended with LeBron leaving the floor before time ran out. What? Okay, next night they went from facing the league, the team with the best record in the league, to the worst. Some more results, though. They fell to the Suns, trailing by as many as 19 points. Watch this in the third quarter. LeBron Run. Lazy, inbounding, off the backboard. That's a turnover. That's not good. And then if they're going to rebound this week, it will not be easy. They have three games all against current playoff teams. Tonight, they host the Clippers, then the Nuggets on Wednesday, and the Celtics Saturday night on ABC. That face says it all there. No rest for the weary. Here's LeBron today. I don't believe that we're flawed. Um, I believe we're... Uh, a little bit inexperienced. I believe we have um, uh, some things that we can always get better at. I think we're a young team and we all knew that coming into the season and we're putting together a team, you know, to be together for the first year and trying to figure things out on the fly. I don't want to say that there's a problem with this team. And when you're not uh, winning ball games, you can always say, oh, there's a problem. I, I don't believe in that. I believe there's things that we can do much better um, and be more consistent. But um, we still, uh, you know, have an opportunity to be great today. And we should take advantage of that, or at least try to. If the Lakers are going to make the postseason, they're going to have to do what's rarely been done before. Here's the thing. They're four and a half games out of a playoff spot with just 19 games left to play. Only three teams have made the playoffs facing this large of a deficit this late in the season. The 97 Washington Bullets, the 02 Raptors, and the 05 New Jersey Nets. And none of them went on to win a playoff series. Stephen A. Smith will be in Los Angeles all week as the Lakers start a three-game stretch that really could decide their season. And Stephen A. LeBron has got to lead the way if they're going to defy the odds and somehow make the playoffs. We just saw him leaving the court early against Milwaukee. So let's start with him. What do you need to see from him over these final 19 games? Better leadership. Not an, uh, stop pointing the finger at other people for mistakes that you make. LeBron James is arguably the greatest player in the world. We all know that. But the flip side is, is that he hasn't been himself defensively. Uh, there's a lot of defensive assignments he's missed and engaging in histrionics and being demonstrative on a basketball court, pointing the finger at other people. That's just not going to cut it in the eyes of his teammates. That definitely is point number one. Point number two is just recognizing the fact that the Lakers are on the brink of elimination and playing like it. If the Los Angeles Lakers lose tonight, in my estimation, they lose tonight to the Los Angeles Clippers. They're not making the playoffs. This is it for them. As far as I'm concerned, this is the last go round. This is the last dance. They don't make it. They're not make, they don't win the night's game against the Clippers. They're not making the playoffs. Play like it. Play with a level of desperation and encourage your teammates to do the same and encourage your coach to do the same. And you might still have salvation somewhere along the line. Yeah. All right, let's assume that they don't make the playoffs because at this point it is a very, very, very long shot just to be nice. What's the long-term fallout, Stephen A., if they don't make these playoffs this year? I'm not worried about the long-term fallout based on whether or not they make the playoffs this year. I'm worried about the long-term fallout, Sage, in the event that LeBron James and Magic Johnson can't recruit anybody to come to L.A. We're not hearing about Kevin Durant being a Laker. We're hearing about Kyrie potentially willing to come to the Lakers. But I don't know how reasonable or, or you know that is. Uh, obviously, the Jimmy Butlers of the world, the Kawhi Leonard's of the world, the Anthony Davis you need, uh, the Pelicans to cooperate. We know all of those things. It is entirely possible that the Lakers could go out there and get a couple of elite guys to join LeBron James or get absolutely positively nothing. Mm. And if that ends up being the case this summer with the following summer, LeBron's movie Space Jam coming out. He, remember, it was Michael Jordan before. Now it's him. All those things that he had in his vision, all of those things that he was planning, 
everything begins to unravel and fall apart if they don't get him some help this summer. That's what it comes down to. But but also to your.